Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay Ner Chuck, and this, you know what it is, is The Thunder Show, AKA WLTV, the most adored wine show that runs every single day on the internet. And so today we have a very special episode. I'm extremely excited about this because it's a little memory lane, a little revisiting, going whoop, whoop, way back to 2000 vintage Barolos, which caused a huge stir in the wine industry, you know, three, four years ago when they were released, when the wine spectator and James Suckling decided to score the Piedmont 2000 vintage a 100 point vintage where a lot of conservative and traditional Italian peeps, and you know you gotta be careful pissing those guys off, felt that it was a hotter vintage and was a little bit more of a vintage that was new world, like I like to call kangaroo-y, you know, because of the heat in that vintage, not as extreme as 2003, but very fruit bomb, explosive, over the type, ripe, non-traditional Piedmont wines. And uh, a lot of people feel that 2001, in the inner, inner wine nerd circles, like where me and like Sir Gary Vaynerchuk likes to hang out, we've, we haven't brought him out in a he while. Hasn't been around for a while. If people have been asking me, that's why I just brought it up. He may have to make a cameo. Anyway, do we still have his costume though? Yeah, I think we have everything. Guess what tomorrow is? All right, so anyway, a lot of people felt 2001 was a much more serious, traditional, more tannic, structured, not as foofy, foofy, you know, brains and integrity instead of maybe pretty looks that the 2000 vintage had. So we're gonna revisit it with three very serious wines, including a $140 Barolo at the end that is very special and probably the biggest reason we're doing this episode. I just felt like I wanted to taste it. Uh, what do we wanna talk about? Obviously there is one big, big thing to talk about, which is that finally, after weeks of pleading by me and many others, the New York Jets have begun the Kellen Clemens era. And as you can see, it's begun, and now we have moved from number 10 to focusing on number 11. Now before you call me bandwagon and switching and always liking the backup quarterback, or you've only not liked Chad for six or seven or eight games this year, I want to show you something. This, this, my friends, is Kellen Clemens' jersey from last year because he wore the number six. Now, some may say, oh, sad, a $100 waste of time. Not for me. This is what I'll be sporting because I'm an original, an original Kellen Clemens fan. I don't know if you guys noticed, but he almost looks physically like Brett Favre. I see magic in the future of our Oregon Cowboy, leading us to many Super Bowls. Not too many, Kellen, because I gotta buy the team and I don't want the price to be too high. But I'm very prepared for this KC era to begin, and I'm excited, and I will be watching. And I know a lot of you are Washington Redskins fans, so it'll be a very interesting weekend coming up, and I am jazzed. So, it's also the first day of Knicks season that day. It's a very good sports time in New York. Not as good as Boston. First wine. Andrea Oberto, 2000, Barolo, Vigna, Albarella. Albarella, Ella, Ella. <laughs> a, a. 38 US dollars, 91 points, Daniel Thomas's, who was the former Italian wine critic for Robert Parker's wine advocate, 14.9%. And let's start with the Nebbiolo grape, which is the grape that is found in Barolo. A lot of people think Barolo is the grape. That is incorrecto. Uh, Nebbiolo is, and it is a grape that brings a lot of excitement and just really structured wines. I love Barolo. I mean, right now, I'm just imagining, you know, Parmesan cheese, which is what I wanted to have this with, but it's been a hectic day and I forgot to call for it. Uh, spaghettis, things of that nature. I, I find Barolo wines, even though we're dealing with 38, 60, and $140, so you're gonna kill me in the CKCs and other people and everybody's gonna be like, what? Barolos, and listen to me carefully, not these specifically, but as a category, I do believe, especially given the Euro and the prices that they were coming in at, I still think that Barolo is a very undervalued category, even though it has a lot of respect in the wine world and they make great wines, and if you talk to any serious wine drinkers, you know, unless they're closed-minded, which most are, but unless they're closed-minded, Barolos have a lot of respect because they're very well made, very structured. These wines have been open for quite a while. We got these really pumping. These wines have been open for five hours, uh, which is a nice number. Um, the Albarella, Ella, oh, I can't, I have to do it. It's just so fun. Uh, I mean, we're talking about a 2000 vintage wine. If you think about, you know, four years since release, you know, somebody was storing that, the economic constraints on that, and it's $38. So, you know, I'm, I'm excited about trying this wine, seeing what this has to offer. Uh, 
Roberto is, is a very sneaky producer. I think he makes a lot better wine than people realize. He's a little bit lesser known than the next two. Let's see what's going on here. It's got some nice color, which is always a very good thing to have. I think you need that to establish yourself as a wine. You have to have some color, otherwise you're water. Um, let's give this a little bit of a sniffy sniff. Now this is where Barolos really attack me and attach right to my heart because you know what I feel about bouquet. This wine has a beautiful rose petal component, some light strawberry action coming through on the nose. Um, there's a little hint of cave in here. And uh, uh, I know you've been in caves. So, you know, there, what I mean by cave is that there's like a bat, cobwebby kind of component to this wine on the nose, which I'm enjoying quite a bit. The uh, strawberries and cherries are really dancing vibrantly on the nose though. This has a very serious bouquet. Right off the top, makes me very, very interested in the wine. Let's give it a whirl. good start. So, is this a fruit balmy-esque kind of Barolo compared to more traditional style? Yes, maybe it is a little bit. But I think time has been a benefit. And that's with a lot of fruit bombs. A lot of people hate fruit bombs. You know, I get crazy sometimes about the fruit bombs as well. But over time, as they take away some of that baby fat, they get to become a little bit of a princess. And this wine is princess all day for me. This wine is extremely smooth, very luscious, Gorgeous, gorgeous red Twizzler-esque flavors on the mid palate. Really long and silky, almost a soy sauce component on the finish, which, you know, I can hang with sushi with the best of them, so I enjoy, I like. Um, long finish, still tasting the sour cherry skins on my palate, which is very impressive. Mouthfeel extraordinary. This is a wine that I can see lasts easily for seven to ten more years. Goes extremely well with a lot of dishes. Bring on the veal right now, Mott. You like the veal? Oh, yeah, I knew it. Um, this is a very serious wine. I'm going to give it one more whirl because I'm getting a little bit excited about this wine. I want to make sure before I get too excited. Maybe it's just a good day, so. I'm not shaving until the Jets win, by the way. Huh. That's what's going on here, if anybody's wondering. Um, the witless beard? This could get real ugly real, real fast. Ugly. Their schedule is brutal. This could be really bad. Um, I'm gonna score this wine 93 plus. I, I think this is an exceptional bottle of Barolo. I think it's an out and out steal. I think if you're looking for a serious $40 bottle for the holidays or as a gift, this is one to seriously seek out. Hit up all your stores, all your corners, the internets, do what you gotta do because this wine is bringing serious thunder and I think is an absolute bargain for very serious structured wine. And truthfully has me downright giddy over the next two wines because I'm paper. But we know about paper, paper gets dangerous. The Giacomo Borgono 2000 Barolo Liste, 60 US dollars, 94 points. Wine Spectator, only about 300 cases of this little bouquet Barolo were made. I mean, come on, zoom in on the bottle one more time. Is that old school? You know, the black and the gold. See that? I know, he's got it. So, you know, Real, real old school in its in its packaging. I like that. It takes you back to memory lane when the Barolos were made the right way. But I like them better this way. No, you don't. You're right. Sorry. So, 60 bones, 94 points, wine spectator. Let's see what this has going for it. The color is a little bit more traditional. What you will notice on Barolos is a lot of times their color... I don't want to call it Pinot Noir S, but it's definitely lighter and always has like a brownish hue around the outer edges, which don't be scared of the brownish hue. Embrace the brownish hue. Give us a little bit of a sniffy sniff. Now this one is much, much more earthy in its approach, a little bit, much more, not a little bit, a lot more traditional than the previous wine. Uh, I'm getting some rocks, I'm getting good old fashioned mud pie bombs, which were always fun. 
I'm getting some cedar and a little hint of cinnamon as well. Um, but I'm also getting some fungus action. Little, 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 you know, I don't want, you know, mushroomy is the best way to really kind of approach this. Yeah, this is, you know, it's it's got its earthiness to it. This is much more traditional on the nose. Let's give it a whirl and see if it translates to the palate. Good thing I didn't do the beard thing four weeks ago. Hmm. I'd look like you, Ma. I'd actually pass that. Nice. You trim? I always trim. Brolos are good wines, especially when they're forcing you to pay this kind of price point. Much drier, much more classic. The tannins are ripping through my palate like a chainsaw, but it's okay. I appreciate. Um, we don't hate around here. No haterade is drank on the set of WLTV. Um, the flavors are a little more muted. They're a little tighter. Uh, I appreciate the earthy tones. I mean, most of you who watch WLTV know I am going to go vegetables over fruit every day of the week, so it's not a matter of that. It's just a matter of this wine not reaching its full potential at some level for me. Um, it's still tight. It still has years to go, so maybe it's just in an awkward stage. You remember your seventh grade picture. Don't hate. So, you know, I said don't hate twice in the twice. same episode. I'm pissed right now. Fine. You're lame. Um, no, you're not. I like you. Um, all in all, this is a wine that I think uh, could get better over time. M maybe with the right foods would be a joy or a pleasure, a combination of those natures. What am I talking about? Anyway, um, all in all, I'm disappointed. I'm actually kind of just disappointed. I, you know, this wine on the nose had so much potential. The things that I look for and really gravitate towards to when I think about Barolo. It's just a lamer version of the last wine at some level, but with old world flavors. It's just not intense enough for me. It's a little awkward on the mid palate, which bothers me. I mean, it's still, you know, beating on it while it's still a very good wine. It's still very focused, very well made, um, and there's a lot of other nice factors to it. The, the tannins, the finish is nice and long. So, I mean, it's, you know, I'm kind of torn. I mean, to me, to me, this is a 90 point wine, so I'm still not. You know, I'm kind of high on it, um, but it, it just disappoints. You know, it's like, it makes me think of Dave and Dave. Remember that? Dave oh, and Dan, God. the Olympics. Remember that? I mean, oh, they're still solid, athletic, Olympic-type athletes, but, like, one of them didn't even qualify for the Olympics, and the other one, like, sucked. So it's like, you know, this reminds me of Dave and Dan. Circa, what is that, 1992, 88? Barcelona. Barcelona, 92, right? Oh, that's so disappointing. You didn't think Dan and Dave would make a cameo on WLTV, <laughs> did you? So that's what I think. 90 points. Let's move on. All right, Peanut Gallery. It's my show. All right. Next. Ceretto. Uh, Brico Roche Barolo 2000. This is big time stuff. 140 U.S. bones. 96 points. Wine Spectator. And I'm pretty damn excited about tasting this wine. This is what makes WLTV a joy and a pleasure to do this wine. Um, really interesting, really interesting color. Well, let's see if we can get this. It almost has a little bit of an orangey kind of hue. Yep, there's there's three bucks. Oh, oh, there's another seven. Oh, four more. All right, so it has an interesting brownish orange hue, which is very classic and traditional to the Barolos. So again, if you've never had a Barolo and you see the color and you're like, what's going on there? This is a gorgeous copper tone to it, like pennies surrounding the entire bottle. Let's give this a little bit of a sniffy sniff. Huh. There's a little hint of like a birch tree kind of component coming through on this nose, which is quite interesting. Um, I'm getting a little bit of a basil action on the nose as well. Um, there's also some really obvious, real solid foundation of cinnamon cookies on the nose, it's got a really kind of like a room, actually not the cinnamon cookies themselves, but the way the room smells when you're making cinnamon cookies. Very pretty, very uh, very pretty. There's some lilac, some, some very potpourri kind of component. Very pretty, 
not killing me on the nose, but it's still extremely pretty. Let's give it a whirl. Yeah, this is really good wine. It was a really nice time to drink it as well. If you're sitting with this in your cellar, which I know all of you are, um, this is a very nice time to pop this. Um, I get a great raisiny kind of component, almost that you'd find in Amarone. Um, very pretty, luscious blackberries integrated gorgeously with sour, I mean like mm, sour cherries, which is just pretty and gorgeous on the mouthfeel. Great mid palate. The transition from the first flavor to the last finish flavor is one that most wines dip off on, and a lot of the under twenty dollar wines don't even have anything going on there. This wine almost has a peppermint component on that level. Uh, I'm getting some black, freshly grinded pepper components on the uh, on the flavor profile profile as well. There's some gorgeous mocha flavors that go to the outer cheek level of your mouth, just going to the outside of your palate. This wine's very complex. I almost want to call it thought-provoking. This is the kind of wine that you beg to have when you've just ordered it at like 10 p.m. and you're not leaving the restaurant at 2 p.m. and you get the cigars and the cheese and the second order of food and dessert and just you're chilling, you're hanging out and you're thinking about this wine. This wine has layers to it, like reading a great novel instead of watching the movie version. I mean, this is really exceptionally well made, really impressive, and just gorgeous. I'm gonna score this wine 95 points. I think it's an absolute home run. I think it's a wine of classic quality, and it's a wine that I'm going to seriously consider, you know, making part of my collection. This is really exceptional. I think a lot of people watching WLTV don't know where to start with Barolos. They see them on the price, uh, they see the prices are kind of high, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s. They're intimidated by that. You don't want to roll the dice and get the wrong one. If you come across this for sure, snag it. Um, but most of all, most of all, by far, if you have not put yourself in the Barolo game, there's just something about Barolo that makes it a lot of people's favorite wine and I highly recommend that you go out and try it because trying new things is what it's all about and that is the key to building your palate and enjoying life. Question of the day. Favorite Barolo and lurkers get involved with this too because you know you break my heart and have you ever had a Barolo? If you haven't, I want to see a lot of no's. I'm curious. I think the percentage is a lot higher than people realize. These wines are really still somewhat under the radar in price. Hopefully we didn't ruin that today. Because you, with a little bit of me, were changing the wine world, whether they like it or not.